Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be reviewing this, my Yoshika 635, which I've had for just over five years. So the basics. It's a Yoshika made twin lens reflex camera, first made in the 1950s. It's got a 3.5 80mm lens and it's compatible with 35mm adapters. The waist level viewfinder also has a magnifying glass for focusing better, but I've never really found it that helpful. So everything is done by looking down. So here you have your aperture and here you've got your shutter speed, which goes up to one five hundredth of a second. And this is how you focus. This was actually my first ever medium format camera and it did take a bit of getting used to. Shooting at eye level with the flipped image in the viewfinder made it quite hard to line up the horizontals. Like a lot of cameras made in the 50s, it's also quite hefty and bulky and it's not a camera I take out with me unless I know I'm definitely going to use it. And it also has a knack for ruining frames of lens flares. It's not quick to use either. If you want to take a shot, you've got to line it up with the flipped image in the viewfinder. You've got to cock the shutter here and then you take the image here. And then to wind it on, you press this button in the middle and then you wind it on until you line up the number in this little window. It's definitely not a quick camera to use. It slows everything down. But that's one of the reasons I love film photography. Also, this whole process makes it super easy for doing double exposures. The 80mm lens is great for street photography and architecture, but not for portraits. The images are soft and lack focus, and it's rare to get a sharp portrait with a beautiful Bokka background. I do like the Bokka aesthetic, but it's not enough to detract from the main subject not being sharp. Most images do have this cool big netting effect, which is an aesthetic a lot of people go for, and when the Bokka is right, it is really nice, this kind of swirly blurred effect. One thing I really love about this camera, you don't get it in a lot of medium format cameras, is its compatibility of 35mm adapters. And I tried this out last year and I'll link the video down below. I also shot some expired Tri-X film which won in a competition with this last year and I absolutely loved it. In those shots you can really see how it performs better with the landscapes and architecture compared to these portraits which are shot both in artificial and natural light. I also really like the hot shoe mount being on the side here because when you put intact a light to it, it almost mimics an off-camera flash. Although I don't know what I was thinking trying to focus on a tattoo with this lens. Personally, I love this camera for its sentimentality as it was my introduction into 120 film. And this is the first ever medium format shot I took with it. And it kind of sums up the camera. It captures atmospheres great, but it's nothing you'd want to print out big without it becoming a blurry mess. Despite my sentimentality, I wouldn't recommend it if you want a versatile twin reflex camera. So that is it for the review of this beautifully flawed camera. And also at the beginning of the year, I made a video all about aiming for 100 rejections. And I look back on it and I look back on my spreadsheet I've created with that video. If you've not watched it, I'll leave a link down below. But very briefly, it's all about aiming for 100 rejections in a year, all based around like magazine submissions or open calls. And it's about changing your perspective on the rejections. And it just got me thinking that with a lot of us at home, and I know we've got a lot of time on our hands, and like me, you might be similar to me, I don't really know how to channel my energies at the moment. A lot of it is going into making videos. And if you want something to channel your energies and focus into, I, I think it could be really cool. So I'll link that down below as well. And until next time, I hope everyone is as safe and healthy and happy as possible. And I'll see you in the next one.